But here is the guest of honor coming in. Uh, you know him affectionately as uh, he's been deemed the father of this hip-hop generation. Um, at the next elevation from Cosby, he's known as affectionately as Uncle Phil or Alonzo Sparks, you know, for those of you who remember Sparks when he was working with Terrence Howard and Miguel Nunez. But most, I was referring to his monologue on this new commercial that he has out about the educational system has failed. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is Mr. James Avery. Mr. Avery, hello there. How are you? I am, I am, I am, I am blessed. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I missed you, but, you know, in the morning there's certain things one has to take care of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one can't have sit by the phone and wait, you know? <laughs> the, uh, okay, I, the queen. When the queen calleth, honey, she needs her subjects to meet her at the throne. You know, I do understand. Thank you so much. You know, Thank you so royalty, much for gracing us. The royalty still has other things to do. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, while we were. Um, Waiting for you to come on in, I, I I said I was going to start off. I number one need a copy of that monologue just simply because it's it's sickening. But this monologue that you give in this commercial about the system has failed you, yeah, Mr. Professor. <laughs> Woo! It was it was a wonderful commercial, you know. God, I live for that monologue. I said, I, I got to find, I, I'm going to end up recording that just so I can write it down because oh. I think it needs to be the mantra across the globe as far as the educational system is concerned. I am just living for that monologue. Oh. And thank you for that delivery, honey. That, oh, yes. Well, thank you. Whew. Thank you. I didn't write Yes. That. You don't have That's to all right. I, I, whoever wrote it, we'll give them the yeah. credit, you know, once we find out. But well, you know your delivery say, of it you know is just if it's, not on the page, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. So. You know it. <laughs> oh, so now let's get into the world of Mr. James Avery. Oh, I don't know because for saying. years, a lot of us have been watching you for years. If I, I went over your bio and as I went down, I was like, oh, my God, I remember that. And oh, my oh my God, I forgot he did that. And, wow, that he was in that? And then I had to think back on it, and I'm like, okay. You know, and you have a very impressive, impressive monologue. Oh, well, thank I, I mean, um, um, uh, uh, dossier. Thank you. thank you. So was this something that you've always wanted to do, was uh, go into the field of, of acting and entertaining? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. No. I wanted to be a writer. That's what oh. I wanted. And, uh, well, um, well, I was, my mother raised me. I was raised by a single mother. And uh, mm -hmm. my mother never, actually mem never got the memo that a single woman couldn't raise a male child, you know? This is old. School. Okay. You know, I brought you. Okay. So I take you out, make another hey. one, like it's that kind of rearing, you know? I understand it. I'll come from that same school, so go ahead. Okay. You can have quiet time after I bust your butt, okay? Exactly. And, um, but, and, but she didn't have much of an education, but she uh, respected education. So I always had books, mm -hmm. and, you know, National Geographic and little golden books, and education was just very important. Did you say little golden books? Wow, yes, you I took did. me back. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Wow. Woo! All okay. Those books, all those little things, you know, Jack and Jill Club and all that stuff. And uh, stop! So oh my I God! Was, you know, I was into reading, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a football scholarship out of high school to Virginia State College in Petersburg. And mm -hmm. I, was, I was 17, I think, and uh, never been away from home. Went to a historically black college. Never been surrounded by so many beautiful women in my life. <laughs> and just you know, that whole social milieu that is a historically black college. I don't know mm -hmm. if you haven't gone, they don't know, but I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, so that just took me right out of my little thing, and I lost my scholarship and all that stuff. And 
flunked out of school. Oh, you did not sit up there and become big baller on campus and lose the damn football scholarship. Yes, I did. Flunk right out. Oh, Mr. Man. Okay, (laughs) tell your story, child. I did. (laughs) Got her mom was like, well, your big ass, your big butt ain't going to lay around here for the rest of your life, so you going to have to do Well, that. how about it? So I had to join the Navy. I joined the Navy because it was during Vietnam. They were drafting for the Army mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm. Marines, and there was no way in the world I was going to go into the Army. So I joined mm. the Navy. And when I got out of the Navy, I uh, stayed in California, and I started going to San Diego City College. And while I was there, one of my instructors asked me to audition for a play, and I did. And I liked it. Well, this was during the 70s, you know, so. Right, it right. It was hard to educate the people and the politicize. And there were a lot of friends of mine who were writers and poets. And, you know, I just, we're just doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Just doing what you do. And uh, I just fell into it. And it's just something that I liked. And I got a scholarship to go to University of California, San Diego. Then I got a fellowship to go to London to study. Then I got back and some friends and I, we started our own little theater company. Then I got to go to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Then I moved to L.A. You know? Kind wow. Of things happened, you know. So that's, that's wow. Happened. You know, let me, let, me, let me ask this because, see, I'm 6'4", you're 6'5". Oh, yeah. Mm. As a man of size, now, okay, let me go. I'm going to go here first, and then I'm going I'm to flip the other side. As a man of size dealing with the the realms and the business of acting, because now you, we're talking about just the business of it mm-hmm. and what this means and that means, how did that ground you or whatever? What did you do to forge your way through all of that? Because you're not the quote-unquote leading man status. No, I want to be a character actor. But that effect, I lost, I lost jobs because of my size. Uh, but I kept going anyway. Wow. And aside from the fact that as an as an actor of color, 6'4", and not being a typical little dumb black guy in the corner, there was an issue. Yeah. For one of my uh, one of my first jobs, there was an issue. They they asked my agent if I was gay because I've been doing Shakespeare for two and a half years. As if uh-huh. somehow, if you could speak the King's English using vowels and consonants, that meant you were something else. And then I got insulted because it was, I'm, I wasn't, but if I was, what would have to do, that have to do with anything? You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. That's what really pissed me off. I said, I'm not, but maybe I should be just to piss you off, but I'm not. You know? Okay. <laughs> but it was insulting. Okay. Oh, now that's, that's, a, that's an interesting spin. I can speak English like an educated person, but I have to be quote, unquote, other, other than. Uh, right. Oh, wow. You know what hmm. I mean? Yeah. And that, uh, that I do. That bothered me. I do. Now, be, now, that's very interesting because I am an openly gay actor. And yeah. with my size, it, oh, Lord, Don't you know, I, it's, a, it's, it's almost as if. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm only, you know, we get pigeonholed into the whole stereotypical what, what, what is supposed to be deemed gay, quote unquote. But yeah. you're right because, because I'm able to, to speak well, and when, when I want to talk, you know, my diction is on point, and you know, my vocabulary is decent, and I'm, I'm not, you know, a mm. thug and this, that, and the other. It becomes very, uh, uh, such a, a huge battle in this particular business. And well, you were able to, huh? Yeah. They, they, don't, they yeah. don't know what's outside the box. They have a difficulty adjusting to that. But if you, you know, you work it hard enough, sometimes you can, you can get by it. You know? Okay, right. So, I'm, from the yeah. theater. I'm from the theater, so sexual orientation was never a question. Nobody really cared. You know, so I'm thrilled to that. Right, you know. Whatever it is that you do, you know, <laughs> but, Okay, right. Okay, just make sure you hear. And okay, your call time is six o'clock now. Uh, you know, like right? Alvin and Ailey, we go. Gonna... Alvin Ailey said to his dancers, he said, "I don't care how much girl you are on the street, but when you hit the stage, you're all man." How about it? I'll say. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, okay. That, okay, okay. That's cute. Now that, that's cute. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> Work it, but I've been in, I've been in, I've been in shows. I did some shows with friends, you know, and uh, you never one knew one never knew one 
was orientation. You never asked. But you could tell mm-hmm. in certain performances. And so you would let right. the younger brothers know, you know, my brother, you need to stiffen this up a little. You know, nobody needs to know your business. Mm-hmm. You know, unless you want them to mm-hmm. know. Nobody needs Right, to know. And, and remain true to the character that you're portraying. The character, exactly. Right? This is the theater. It's, you know, exactly. It's the sacred place. Okay, uh, see, okay, the theater, not the theater. Oh, I no, hate that. No, anyway. No, <laughs> no, <please. laughs> okay, right. Now, um, okay, okay, because we're on this gay thing, I have to go here. I have to go here. Um, do you know that in uh, particularly the, the black male uh, community, the gay male community, that you are considered, number one, a hero because you're a man of size. But number two, you are a, 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 a sexual icon oh, to out. us. Oh, oh, you didn't know that? After no. all these years, you didn't know that? Oh, get a go. Oh, please, no. Please. Uh, yeah, please, baby, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. Listen. There, there's five names, four or five names that come up. We think black men in Hollywood, as far as men of size and those of us who like men of size, uh-huh. there is, okay, and, and, and it comes up, we always say this like this, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, Ving Rhames, Anthony Anderson, James Avery, and then we would go, sometimes we'll flip a coin and come up with a fifth name. A lot of times we'll go to, what is Harry Slayer's name? I can't think of Harry Slayer's name from Boston. Oh, T. McBride. He's Boston oh. Public. I'm thinking Harry from, uh, what's the name? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yes, you are a status symbol oh, in black gay male culture because when, when you were working on Fresh Prince of L.A., you were, you were tall you were everything, and, and see, for those of us who like big boys, yes, you, you have become an icon, a sex symbol, honey. And oh, you never knew that all these years? Oh, hell no, I never knew that. Oh, never child, well, let me be the first to break that news to you, honey. You, yes, oh. baby. <laughs> okay. They, they like to tell my wife. <laughs> I know. Tell Barbara, tell her, say, girl, okay, girl. <laughs> Okay. But Anytime you say, okay, where you at, James? I just say we snatched the thought. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't, we know don't pull the thought. I don't know if you know this, but I was one of the first gay characters to die of AIDS on television. No. Years ago, when I first got here, there was a show called Brothers. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. On on network, and I played uh, I played a gay football player. <gasps> And I died of AIDS. Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. You did. Yeah, it was the first one. Oh, wow. But that was interesting. But I completely I forgot lost, about that. Uh, I just lost a friend, some friends to, to that disease. You know, it made me a little, a little more sensitive to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, here in, 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 in this industry, you know, how is it that you're able to bounce back and to maintain yourself, when because you know there's a lot of people, named and unnamed, who have, you know, succumbed to to, to uh, HIV and AIDS, and other uh, deadly terminal illnesses. When you become friends with 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 these folks, and then we end up losing them, you know, how did you maintain yourself without without going through you know the whole want to fall in the casket kind of thing that we go through as black folks. No, well, you know, I think it's a lot, of, a lot about my rearing. I'm, I've lost people in my life, but the thing is, people that you care about, you never really lose. I mean, they're friends exactly. people that I know, you know, that I respect, and I, I'm, I was glad that they had been in my life for whatever time they were there. I mean, you, you learn a lot from the people that you know. You know, if you, if you have mm. quality people, I mean, you, you're real good friends. You can count on one hand if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Okay, but, say it now. A lot of acquaintances, but the real good friends on one hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are people that you don't have to see every year. You don't talk to every night. You know what I'm saying? Every one exactly. Two, one or two years you call, you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, bye. You know? Right. It's, huh? Okay, right. <laughs> right. Okay, hey, girl, yeah, we kick it. Okay, boo, just want, okay, to, just want to hear your voice. Got to go. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. 
And uh, if you're you're lucky when when the quality of people that you surround yourself with. That's why you have to be careful. I tell people you have to be careful of the people that you surround yourself with. You have to separate the wheat from the chaff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those who are there for one reason, those who are there for another. I mean, most of my friends, my good friends, I've known for twenty and thirty years. They haven't changed. Exactly. They're, they're, they're yeah, people, yeah. But they haven't changed, you know. And it's and it's a matter of your life of how you live your life. I'm lucky that I have a wonderful wife, that I have a son, I have grandchildren, I have a life, you know. Right. The person. It's really important that the, the significant other person in your life. I'm lucky that I have the woman that I have in my life, you know. Mm-hmm. But again, yeah, because I've been married for like twenty some years now, right? Twenty four years. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But that's because of again, you know that. You know what I believe? I believe that a man's relationship with his mother defines his relationship with women for the rest of his life. Okay, now. That's one or he doesn't. And a woman's relationship with men, with her father. With her father, her that's right. Defines her relationship with, you know, men mm-hmm. for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. If she has a good relationship, she'll look for good men. If she has a bad relationship, she'll always have somebody who's unavailable in her life, someone to screw her up. Exactly. But, you know, taking that lesson, how do you incorporate all of these wonderful jewels into building your characters, even when you had to play someone sinister? Oh, well, everything you play is a part of you. Sinister yeah. guys are better because they're much more fun. I know. I, they are, oh, they're so delicious. Oh, I love it. <laughs> they are delicious, yeah. <laughs> they're so, good guys are basically just good guys. They're boring, okay? But evil, evil yeah. you know, evil is something else. And they never consider themselves evil. They're always wronged somehow. Just and misunderstood, exactly. And knowing they got a bitch kid going up that spine from hell. Yeah, and acting is, is like is an extension of psychology because you get to know yourself. Every role you like play that. is a piece of you. So you examine things in yourself that you'll never be able to act upon in the real world. You can act upon mm-hmm. it. And, it. and it releases you and frees you up in a real way. I like that. Acting is an extension of psychology. I like that. I'm quoting that. I'm putting that on Facebook. Okay. I'm serious. I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm putting that on Facebook. And I'm, I'm, I'll give you credit that you said that. It requires uh, but examination. It requires examination of who and what you are as a person to be able to, to explore and to build a character. You know, It's like when I was in school, you mm-hmm. studied uh, voice and whatnot. You studied how you breathe, how emotions affect your breathing, what does that breathing change in your body, all of mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. Just standing up and staying lying. That's what pisses me off sometimes. People have no respect for the craft of acting. Because it's not right, like right. It's like, I don't, want to, I don't want to see you act. You know, I don't want to see you work. Right, exactly. I believe you exactly. are what that person is. You know? Now, the- now, what was the transition like for you, the, uh, going from being a voiceover actor when you were doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle as the voice of Shredder, for those of you who are turtle lovers, mm-hmm. okay, and, and doing that character voice, and then you did a couple of other uh, characters uh, in the animation world. Sweetheart, and I then going actor. from there a to... A long time ago, one of my teachers told me, you're only an actor... When you're acting, the rest of the time you're unemployed. So as oh, well, actor, how about that? You do whatever you can be paid to do. You want me to do a commercial, I do it. You want me to do voiceovers, I do it. You want me to do a play, I do it. You want me to do movies, I'll do it. TV, whatever you're going to pay me to do is what I'm going to do. So I can work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, when I, was okay, in college, it's, it's, when I was in college, there were people uh-huh, there, uh-huh. very elitist. They were like, you know, I'm never going to do television. I'm only going to do theater and film. I said, oh, really? Oh, really? I must have a trust fund because I need a job. So, what I have that. <laughs> you know, it's about working. You know? Right. It's about, you know? I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. Now, let's go here. And, and let me take you back to the Uncle Phil day. Let me look at my time. Okay. Being the what uh, being deemed as number one, you had made the list as one of the top fifty uh, all-time American dads on television. Oh, that's great! Uh, from tele- from TV Guy when they they did a survey about this, I think uh, four or five years ago. Mm. 
and field banks have made that cut. But one of the things about Philip Banks is that, as you heard when I'm entering you, you have become like the father of the hip-hop generation. You know, when Cosby came, Cosby was like the college father. You know, James, when, when James Evans was on TV, James was just everybody's daddy because we, could, mm-hmm. we, we all knew what that struggle was. And when there was a father in the home, you know, we knew what the ghetto daddy was. Mm-hmm. You know, but then come Phil Banks, <laughs> you know, you know, and he was a little bit more of upscale, polished, had money, but he knew he was from the hood. And I loved every time when, when mom and daddy came up there to take you back to your little piglet days and carry on. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, and, and frying the chicken in the lard and things, you know. Uh, I love that. Now, being the father of hip-hop, what was that like for you in that particular situation, or did you see it? as making that kind of an impact at that time? Well, I really didn't see it as making that kind of an impact. I was really, it's funny that you say that because, I, you know, that whole hip-hop rap thing, you know, I, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When, when they called me to audition for Fresh Prince, I had never heard of Fresh Prince. Right. Because I don't listen to rap, you know? Okay, I mean, I, right. I'm jazz R&B, you know, I, what, rap, what, I don't know what that is. And uh, so it was a whole introduction to me to a whole different genre, you know, the gaming thing and and all of that. Oh, there were a whole lot of things I had to get used to, it, just as a person, which, you know, mm. I had to, I could translate into the character. And the mm-hmm. thing with, with Philip was, as as we all are, people of color, we're bicultural and bilingual. We come from two mm-hmm. cultures, you know, that which we achieve and that which we come from. You know, right, I like that. Most of our well, family. you got some cute little jewels, honey. I'm living for you. <laughs> so you done became my new BFF, honey. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, in most of our families, as in Barack's family, you know, you have the classy ones and the and the bums and the thugs, and we have to right cousin JoJo and you know cousin Boo Boo, you know that kind of thing. Uh, I love that Ray Ray and 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 and, and Rochelle. Yeah, so yeah, that one. You know, Lanisha. <laughs> <laughs> And they're all in the family, and they all come from that family, and we all mm-hmm. have to deal with that, you know. Because I was taught very early on it, you know, to be bicultural and bilingual. Like, you know, when I'm out in the world and looking to achieve, of course you attack your vowels and your consonants. But when you're hanging out with your boys, yo, what's up? What's going on, my brother? You know, then you right, know, right. You know, but that's what we have. And the thing is also that the, the, the mistake that happened then was that the younger generation always thinks they know the best. That everything oh, that's yeah. to them for the first time, that no one understands them, that what they discover is the only thing. And Phil used to have to, have to pull Will's coat. Hold it now. You know? Exactly. Like, you know, this, uh, you ain't the only one who knows what's going on. You know, mm-hmm. Don't, don't mm-hmm. dismiss what's, what's been going on. You know, and he, what I liked about Phil is he made no apology for his success. You know, was right. No Wasn't that beautiful? There was an episode where a friend of his who that he used to protest and work with, and she came and got on his case for being, you know, being rich and taking Being care bougie, of yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. And he said, look, let me tell you something. I worked very hard to get what I got and to provide my family with the best, and I make no apologies about it, and I don't hesitate to write a big, fat check for something that I believe in, you know. Mm-hmm, so, right. Come here. You know, and I say that, and you know what the interesting thing is? What? I remember... When I was in school, I had Latin and advanced English and all these other things, but I couldn't take those books home. I had to do the work, you know, the work at school. Couldn't let at school, mm-hmm. get into that stuff because you know they get on your case. And if you're trying to be white, and, and and what used to bother me was, so if I speak the King's English and I make A's, I'm trying to be white. But if I mm. speak like I'm stupid and make F's, I'm trying to be black. So what are you telling me? That success or an achievement has a color. If that's the case, you don't know who you come from. Well, now you know. Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that there has. I don't know why we played ourselves in this why community. You, you know. You know Look because yeah. Come from. Oh. Look at who we come from. So you do not come from a race of victims. You might have been victimized, but you're never. Uh-huh. 
The only a victim okay. is to acquiesce to the victimization if you never fight back. And we always fought back. And the reality is, is that racism has never stopped us from doing anything we wanted to do. Ever. Say that. Made it That's hard. true. Might have made it harder. Now that there is true. Well, we did it. Isn't that right? That there is true. Not now. I see. Oh, James. I'm in the college you Jimmy you in a minute now. I know you can relate to this. There are three phrases mm-hmm. that raised generations of black children that got us to achieve. See if you can relate to this. Number one, when I call you, come. You don't say huh, and you don't say what. By the you time you, you better not say name, what. By the time I get <laughs> saying your name, your little butt's supposed to be standing right in front of my face. Right in front of me, yeah. Be home by the time the street lights come on. <laughs> I <go> home. <laughs> if I got to call your name in the neighborhood, your butt is mine. And number three and most important, if I got to leave work to come to school, Ooh. hear about you, you better have a broken leg or something. You better be dead or half dead or I got to go to the hospital. I better not have to leave my job to come up to no damn school because you cutting the food. Woo, baby. Okay. Okay. Did they not raise the Okay. You know? Oh, my God. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I got to, oh, exhale. Ooh. And if the teacher wait a minute. You don't sit me there because I didn't, oh. If the teacher said, well, I'll just call your parents. No, Jesus, Lord, don't call. Nobody. Okay, whatever you do, okay, paddle me something. something you know, I, I took the paddle in school versus <laughs> calling my, my, my mama. Yes, I did. Oh, yes, yeah. I did. Give me a couple of wax. Give me, a, oh, Lord, whatever don't you, you call do, that crazy do. woman down don't here. Don't call that woman, you know. Don't you dare. Mm-hmm. And I just read an article about that, and, and uh, you know, on, on corporal punishment in African-American homes. And it yeah. And slavery time. When instant obedience is a matter of life and death. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When I call you come mean stuff is happening. We got to go. We ain't got time to come looking for you. You need That's to be right. here. <laughs> you know? You know? That's right. And I don't have time to explain it. Okay, no. right. No. But you huh me, huh? What? That's yes. a slap in the mouth. That's it. Huh. At, at, at what? What? No. Mm. no, no. No, no, no. Mm, that's unheard of. Time, be home by the time the street lights come on. Every bad thing bad that ever happened to us happened at night. At the night. The place for your children to be was home. That's right. That's right. That's oh my God. Oh, wait a minute now, James. Oh. It's time to have a Florida Evans moment. Damn, 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 because you ain't on no team. <laughs> oh, but no, you are black on television because now you're doing Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, it's that great. Sherry and playing her father. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, but you know what, what is that like for you? Oh, I love it. It's great. Because the one thing that we're missing as black people is a relationship between a father and a daughter. Mm, okay. A grown-up daughter. You know what I'm saying? There are a mm-hmm. lot of fathers mm-hmm. out there who raise their children and have their daughters, but we don't hear about them. We hear about the ones who are not there, you know, and we see the results mm-hmm. of women who don't have relationships with a good father. But what about the ones who do? And I just right. think that I can be there and say that there are those men who take that responsibility, you know? Exactly. Do you find yourself gravitating to that now? Because you've been playing a lot of fathers after Fresh right. Prince and – Going to uh, pay Sparks. Whatever they pay me to pay to play. Okay, is, is that it's so simple as complex Shut up, James. Now I can see you for you taking Mark me over the rainbow. Groucho Mark said it best. Now I know what you are. We just haggling over price. Okay. <laughs> okay, I live for that. <laughs> I, you know you are sending me, honey. I'm telling you, you're sending me. <laughs> you what? You are. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, you know, let me. I, I want to ask you this because I've never been able to ask this to anyone. And that is, you've had a stint where you went to the Navy and to Vietnam. Yeah. And praise God that you came back home in one piece and able to achieve the things that you have achieved. In this day and age, when you hear the words, we're going to war, or deployment, 
What does that strike in you today? That strikes anger. Men, mm. we, should not, we should not be... I do a lot of work for the USO because I support the troops. I don't support the war. You need okay. war is not right. so A lot of us are like that. Yeah. Deployment, you know what I'm saying? You're talking right. about sending youth into harm's way. This is not something you do lightly. And this is something mm. that will affect them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. If they ever have a life afterwards. And this whole, don't even get me started with the whole Bush thing. We've been in Iraq and and Afghanistan for nine years. Yes, yes. Nine years. That's longer than World War II, World War I. That's longer than Vietnam. Nine Mm. years. And the casualties Mm. have yet to be counted. Because it's not just physical cavities, uh, casualties casualties. It's it's the mental distress. It's the things and the destruction that it brings to a person's psyche to be in harm's way constantly. Exactly. You know, and people people don't see that. And these are you send boys at seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old at the most impressionable times in their lives. I know what it was mm-hmm. like for me. I was lucky. But I have friends who are still screwed up from that situation. Mm. You know? And what really pisses me off is that the powers that be, they don't send their children. You understand? I know. <laughs> Ain't none of their children over there. <laughs> wow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh-uh. No? <clears throat> you know, because they, they did a survey during Vietnam. It was blacks, browns, and poor whites made up the majority of the soldiers in, in that situation. And that's hmm. what's happening now. Wow. Wow. Well, that, that, wow. Thrilled. I am not thrilled. You don't waste young lives like that. I mean, look at the gifts they could give us. And you're thrilled. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And wow. The that is. is that war has never solved anything. War has never solved anything. It's just set the stage for another war. Okay. Press pause for for just a second. Because on my timer, I have about a minute left. For those of you who are listening by computer, uh, this is going to stop streaming in, a, in about a minute. Those of you listening by telephone, i got a couple more questions and, because I still got to go make donuts, child, so i got to get out of here in a minute. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so those of you listening by phone, I said i got a couple of callers uh, that want to have a question. So yeah, we're going to make it quick. And um, um, bring it on through. So those of you listening by computer, I thank you so much for this special edition. I'm glad that you came in and uh, had a little bit of fun with us because I love, I love this. And uh, we're going to go from there. If you're listening, you can always come back because all of this is going to be all in the archives, okay? So you catch everything in the archives. So with that, we're going to continue on. And let me go here. Let me take a call right now because I want to be okay. through with them. Okay, uh, I'm coming here to uh, 989790. 989-790. Hey, darling, you're dishing tea with Big Meat. Hello, caller. Yoo-hoo. Caller. Oh, well. Okay, let me tell you. Caller. Let me, I'm going to do you one more time, girl. <laughs> Carlos, is that you? Uh, oh well. Oh, okay, we will, well, we're going to go here 734-925 734-925 Carlos, you're on the air, you're dishing tea Good morning Good morning How art thou? Oh, hey <laughs> What's going on, darling? I love you, and I love James Avery. Oh, oh well, let him know that, baby. Thank you. This, this is Carline Regina Dixon from Detroit, Michigan, uh-huh. inspiring actress, videographer, and stand-up comedian. Well, you better list your credits, girl. Go on, girl. How about it? How about it? I am. I have been so inspired by this conversation, I have been just yelling at my phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm tingly all over, and as a struggling actor, I understand I'm right there. I've been doing voiceovers. You need me to host a comedy show. You want me to do spoken word. I'm there. That's right. Okay. I want to work. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love it. Detroit has one of the most amazing African American museums in the country. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, we do. And so, did I'm you have a question for you. I okay, right. would like some advice as someone who's trying to be multifaceted and I just need just one more inspiring word from you. Mhm. All right. I, I, okay. You know, what, what do you what do you need from me? I mean, I don't you know, you're working, you're do, obviously you're doing what you're supposed to do. I'm trying my best. Well, that's, that's I'm I'm doing it. I'm out there getting it. You're out there working it, and but see the thing is, the inspiration, and this is going to be very hard. Very seldom does it come from the outside. It has to come from you. You're the only one that sees your dream. You know, be that as mm. you, people can support around, but the the driving force has to be you. As long as you believe in that dream, and you do what you want to do, you know, and that has to be self-driven. There's some people who can support you. Some people will. Some people won't. Some people are intimidated. Some people aren't. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, you know, it's that it's that battery. There are always people who will say you can't. There are always people who will say you need to stop that now. There are always people who say, you know, you're too old to be doing this. You need to grow up and do something else. They're not you. You can always tell them to kiss your butt. <laughs> I'm not, okay, well, that, that works that, for me. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's exactly what I needed. I, I've i been kicking myself by listening to other people bring clouds on my no. parade. No. no. You know, okay, so, did you, did you, you know funny girl, Miss, Miss Fanny Bryce? Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let you please. <laughs> Barbara's going down. Well. Okay. As long, as as long as you get some personal satisfaction out of what you're doing, as long as it feeds your soul. When it stops feeding your soul, you need to stop doing it. Oh. Well, how about that? Okay, write that, write that one down, girl. Write that one down. Okay. Okay. I'm there. It's, <laughs> it's one of my new affirmations. <laughs> okay. Thanks, darling. Keep I love in. you. I love you back. You know, I'm going to call you in a minute so we can holler together. Right. Okay. That's, all right. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. Lord have mercy. Now, you know, here we go. Because now I have to go into the big questions, and that is, you know, being a- around and helping to shape the careers of Will Smith and Tatiana Ali and Terrence Howard and Miguel Nunez, you know, right when they were at the peak of their career and just starting and to see now, you know, Will is, Will is so so heavy box office right now, it's a shame. You know, he's Midas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terrence Brooks, I mean, Terrence Howard is, you know, up and coming box office uh, Midas, you know. Uh, Miguel, you know, Miguel, that that brother, he's he, like you, he's a worker. That child, honey, yeah. if I look up one more time. Yes, well, you know, Miguel arrived here in L.A. and lived on the street for a while with the mission. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I read that. Came from Carolina, lived out on. See, this is what dreams are. Dreams do that to you. Dreams drag you around to make sure you believe in them. Mm. They test you. You know? Okay, ha. Do the dreams test you? Shut up, see. I'm writing that one down. Dreams (laughs) test you. Okay, I told you, you are the. Man, you need to write a book. I'm telling you. Okay, the dreams test you to make sure you know they're real. Come yeah, on now. Kidding. Wow. You know, that, you know that in your own life, you know? Uh-huh, right, exactly. exactly. Yeah, see, when I lived in New York, I was like that. Yeah. Left up out of Detroit, going there, I was 25, going to be a star, you know, or building that because I was with the production company. Mm-hmm. And he lied to me. Everything was supposed to have been in place. Got there, there was nothing there. 
and Demetrius was homeless for the first month and a half, and for the very first time, I had to go down to the men's shelter, 30th Street and 1st Avenue, honey. Yes. So, whew, I know that struggle, eating off of $2 a day, a bottle my of water. Check, when I got out of the Navy, my VA check was six months late. I lost my apartment. I was living on the street. Get out of and here. Just, and I just got a service. I just got finished serving my country. You know, okay, don't you start me on that. <laughs> don't you start me on that. That's a whole nother damn show. Uh, because don't you get me started on how they treat our people, the uh, service men and women. Okay, see, okay, I'm going to press pause on my own tongue. But okay, mm, hold on. <laughs> okay, because that infuriates me. Yeah. That there, it just, it, 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 it outrages me to no, to no end. Uh, so now... Now that you're here at this point in your career, okay, the day ain't over. Where do you see yourself matriculating to now? What What is it that you would like to see yourself do that you haven't done already? I don't know. I do need to write. I need to get back to my writing, and I need to write some more things. Uh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. I, I, I've, I've got to take more control over certain things, you know, okay. to put myself together. In that sense, and life keeps growing. You know, you never, you know, you never get to a point where it stops. So you're always learning. You're always, hopefully, you'll continue to grow and and change until they shuffle. So you shuffle off this mortal coil. You know, but that's okay. what keeps things exciting. You know, you never get to a point where you say, okay, that's enough. You know, no, because then you stop living. No. For well, me, I, any time you say that's enough, then you stop living. Then you leave. You, go you know. And no, I know, honey, I, I know everything I need to know about. No, you don't. You don't know anything. It's like I remember when I was in I was in Atlanta doing a film, and this uh, little brother came up to me and said, "I want to be an actor. What do I do?" He said, "What did you Well, what did you do?" I said, "Well, I went to college. I studied Shakespeare. I did theater and and whatnot." He said, "I don't want to do no damn Shakespeare. I want to do movies and TV." I looked at him. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I said to him, but I'm going to say paraphrase. I said, "Boy, as long as you black and in America." And no such thing as knowledge you don't need. What don't I need. heard that. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. So you can supply the words I said to it. <laughs> oh, do you know what? This is ball talk. We ain't under FCC regulation. <laughs> <laughs> that was the stupidest thing. What the hell are you? you don't need to know something. That's so stupid. I said, I what you're doing is, you're putting limitations on yourself. You can't blame nobody else. Exactly. Exactly. Remember, you know, when I was young, I came to my mother crying about something. She said, let me tell you something. You come from the people who built the pyramids and invented geometry. Now, all of a sudden, you can't do nothing because the white man don't let you. What kind of sense does that make? It's the stupidest oh. thing I ever heard in my life. Now, so you just confirmed everything I said before you came on the air. What? I just said that exact same thing. About the whole educational system, oh, please. you know, because I'm that monologue in that commercial. I swear to you, that there has got to be somebody's mantra somewhere. I'm a fire. I'm, I'm when it comes. I'm a, I'm gonna record it because I've got to deliver that somewhere. That there is just too powerful to be ignored in the thirty second little blurb. That is too rich. Well, I'm so glad that it is. I mean, I, you know, I haven't seen it. I don't watch myself. But uh, it was a good commercial when I shot it. I'm sure it was. Oh, Todd, you've got to, you've got to see. Yeah, well, it's hard to watch it, sir, because I know I'm like that. I don't like the sound of my voice. No. I, you no. know, I'm I'm my own critic. No. You look know, at, I, I can sit. Clothes look wrong. Oh, I look fat. Oh, look at that. Oh no, I can't watch that. Right. You know, I could see me and not the character all the time. But like, okay, the character. That's your finger point. That day, nothing to do with the character. God. You know. <laughs> Just that and the other. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and all of those kinds of things. So now, when you are preparing for a role and doing your research, you know, to get yourself into this mind frame of this character, do you find that your research is easy or do you find it, you know, somewhat difficult for you to, to go into that? I know for me, I think I know everything by osmosis. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I would get lazy when it comes to researching my character until it's until it's crunch time, 
and then I will pull and, and this, that, and the other. And by the time they say, okay, I need you, then I'm ready. But what is it like for you? Well, you know, because I'm classically trained, you know, Shakespeare you can't cheat on. And it makes me, uh, I stay in the book, I stay in the script and pull out. Okay, okay. All the same skills you need to do Shakespeare well, you need to do August Wilson well. And uh, everything you need to Get know. Get out of here. So that's the secret to August. Okay. Everything you need to know is in the, in the page, on the page. You know, with Shakespeare, it's every period, every dot, every comma, every verb, every adverb, every adjective. With August, it's basically the same way. It's the same rhythm of that whole thing. But in order to learn about a character, it learns about what people say about that character. And you have mm-hmm. to write down as an actor, you, you go in and then you have to make choices. Then you have to mm-hmm. say, you know, you have to decide what's the motivating force behind this particular choice that this person made according to the stage. I mean according to the page. You know, it's very it's mm. very it's very literate, you know. Theater's very literate. Right. You can see in movies you can do all the other things. They can rewrite the thing, they can take it, shoot it twenty or thirty times and redo this and redo that and redo that. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm learning that. You know, film work is cute, but <laughs> I, I'm, it's cute. And don't get me wrong, it, it's uh, love. Yeah. But I know, I, I, you know, I'm a big old ham, and I like instant gratification. So I need my audience. Yeah. You know, I need those applause. I need to know that that line was funny. And I need that laugh right then. Mm-hmm. You know. To feed, you know, it's number one, it feeds my ego. And then number two, I mean, that's just the basic of it. And then number two, it lets me know that my work is being appreciated. Yeah. You know, versus having to wait for the day a movie to come out and then we got to listen to, uh, mm. you know, that's cute. No, don't get me wrong, it's, it's love. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I love that theater training. And, and here in Atlanta, a lot of folks are starting to, to divert away from that now. You know, they, they, want, to, they want Well, everybody I, to... I, I, I know that because they have, uh, uh, and, and believe me, I am happy for any brother who has any success in this business at all. I just worry mm-hmm. that the craft suffers behind it and that you want shortcuts as opposed to craft. I mean, you're supposed to be able to do Tyler Perry and Moliere. Okay. How about it? Right. Okay. As an act, right, because I I truly believe that as an actor, yes. You know. Yes. I, yeah. You know, and that's what you learn. I mean, in August Wilson, who is our Shakespeare, uh huh, demands on you that that uh, Tyler Perry can't do. Mmm. Got it. Okay. Got it. You know, there are rooms for Tyler Perry. I'm not saying there aren't. No, I, no. Let them who have ears hear, honey, because you, you just said a mouthful right there. August Wilson is our Shakespeare. Did you catch that, actors? <laughs> August Wilson is our Shakespeare. Get your research done. If you missed that, I'm going to lay it on out. He just okay. said the same skill set it takes to, to, to work Shakespeare. And that's hard because I did Julius Caesar in high school, and that was hard. Oh, that was hard then. I was Brutus. <laughs> um, uh-huh. in a, yeah, I played Brutus in an in a, in a electric blue sheet, honey. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so this thing, August says music, and he's got like two or three page monologues. Yes, he does. Yes. You got to move that stuff. You can't just. <laughs> oh, yeah, it can't be flat. Oh, it, 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 ooh. Yeah. Yes, all right, all right, all right. See, those are the – yeah, you got to get to writing, man. See, these are the kinds of things when it comes to the business of acting and the business of show, because everybody, you know, we all know what the glitz and glamour is and the paparazzi and, you know, the tabloids. We all know what that is. But these jewels right here – this is the kind of stuff that's not taught. You have to experience it in order to understand it and then translate it, so so folks can get it. That's I'm I, oh I'm so elated right now, and I I'm, I'm, I'm so thanking you for, woo brother 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 man. Okay, I'm 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 sitting up here. I'm you, I told you I'm writing stuff down and taking notes and things because we don't hear this. And then, you know, I'm, I'm tired of seeing acting classes and things where, you know, they, they talk and they talk technical. 
you know, Mm-mm. Well, you know, you really have to understand that body, body language or body images is, is everything to an actor, and it is your tool, it is your everything. Okay, yeah, we know that. That's the surface. Give me that under stuff, baby. I need to break through that surface. Pull it and, and give me the tool that I need to say, okay, boom, that August Wilson is our Shakespeare, people. That there, okay, I'm going to say it one more time because he said it. That is just monumental. August Wilson it's our Shakespeare. And the same skill set it takes to do Shakespeare is the same skill set required to master an August Wilson play. Never better and understand and that. And anyone it that you know, they will tell you the same thing. Oh, so my you goodness. You know? and that's, okay. And, what, and, what, and what's happened that, and a lot with our art, because art has always enabled us to survive. And I shouldn't say this because, well, I don't know what the hell. I worry about our musicianship. I mean, I watched the Grammys the other night, and you know, every once in a while I hear this music, and I am I am a child of the '70s. I am, you know, old school R and B, and you know, when right. when people played instruments, they didn't just go to computers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. People could sing. Okay. Like okay. Shakaan. You know what I mean? People could come sing. on now. See, you we you are know? kindred spirits now, James Avery. We are kindred spirits. Now. Say it, man. Say it. Well, they can Ooh. write music, you know. They can write music and make beats, and you know, it's like when Sarah Vaughan played piano. Carmen McRae played piano. Right, right. For arrangements, okay. Right, and charted it and understood where the notes went. Nobody know how to read music anymore. Come on, just Understanding like, the difference between the whole note and the quarter note and the eighth and the sixteenth note. Let's on a computer and let's let's loop this. Or let's steal some right. Parliament Funkadelic and add this to our thing. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you in Atlanta too, so they probably never gonna talk to me no more. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm from Detroit. I moved here three years ago. Uh-huh. And the scene here, yes, the the whole entertainment scene, which is a good question for you, because from um, coming up, I, I'm, I'm the last generation of understanding what it means to go from start to finish. The movie Sister Act 2, Mm-hmm. When Whoopi come in and they turn that studio, oh, that was us in high school. Uh-huh. We took the basement of our high school right up under the the theater and did just what they did. We had to rearrange flats. We had to paint. We gutted, brought in furniture and, 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 and things to create our studio so we could have a place of solitude. Made them install a bell system downstairs so we knew when the bell rang to get to and from classes. And then we were able to create. We stayed up building sets to 1 o'clock in the morning at the school. My mother was upset about it, but that's what we did. You know, and understanding that training, I think I'm the last generation of that because now it really annoys and pisses me off when I go into a production and you telling me, oh, save your voice because we're going to have lavaliers. What the hell do you mean, lavaliers? You better look. <laughs> lavaliers. We didn't have no lavaliers. That's why you have a voice class. That's why you learn how to use your voice. La- huh? Lavaliers. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> no, so, the question is, do you see us returning or we're not maybe we're maybe not returning because we can never go back. Time doesn't go backwards, but maybe we can reintroduce, you know, because everything comes around, you well, know, I as so. new and improved. Atlanta. I mean, there are people there who are superbly talented and who've been crafted, and it's just a matter of getting respect for the craft again. And I think ah, that there, there are people there the who can do that. You know, it's the craft. It's the thing. Okay, it's one thing to be born with talent, but talent without without craft is just that. You understand what I'm saying? Talent without training. Talent? Just that. You need training. You need craft. You need to learn how to do what you do. You know, you give, you get a gift, but then you need how to use that gift. You know? Okay. You need Talent that. without training. You know? And I know you, all you young people think you know everything. You don't. Okay? 
<laughs> oh All my right. God! Yeah, no. Okay, accept it. Deal with it. You don't. The thing about Will, when Will started acting. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. he got a new respect for acting. He recognized what a brilliant, what a smart person does is recognize what you don't know, and you go to where you need to go to learn it. He did that. Mm-hmm. Okay? He hired a right. church. He asked us. He recognized what he didn't know, and he went and he remedied that. He did not let his ego get in the way of, en- of enriching mm. him or enlightening his whole knowledge. <laughs> Okay. 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 I like that. I'm gonna take one more call and then I got to get up out of here and I know and I thank you for your time. No problem. Uh let me go here. Two four eight six eight eight. Hi darling. Two four eight six eight eight. You're dishing tea. Are you there, caller? Or am I having problems with this dog on? There you go. Hello, caller. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. Hi, darling. Thanks for dishing tea, honey. What's up? No problem, no problem. I wanted to uh, say thank you to Mr. Avery for this very, very raw, real, and inspiring interview today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I've really enjoyed it. I've become inspired to uh, reach new plateaus in my career. And I do want to thank you so much for dishing tea today. Okay. You're quite welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. That wow. That's a beautiful thing. And I'm I'm just so I'm sitting over here. I'm 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 Carla said she was tingly, honey, and we always say that because I get tingly and I get giddy like one of those schoolgirls, you know, mm-hmm. because when I hear interesting and 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 inspiring conversation, um, it it it, it does something to me, and I'm I'm not gonna go there. But it sends me to a place where I can I, I I'd love to, to, to let that become my mantra for the day and let that take me into places where I want to go. Uh it I, I'm I'm turning forty in a month. A month oh, from okay. today. Yes, baby. Yes. And I'm I oh, I feel so free. Woo! So those of you who are forty and over welcome me, honey, into the club in thirty days. Because when I hit there, baby, yes, yes. And so, you know, I hear folks say you all know, the time, I, I, huh? You know your, your bullshit quotient shrinks. You know, you know what? Listen. <laughs> okay. Listen, okay. sugar. The stuff you took when you were 30, you ain't thinking about when you're 40. Okay? Woo! So back off, baby. Watch out. When I tell you, you two words have never been spoken. Mm-hmm. I would, oh, my God, I would say this maybe about Thanksgiving, because your, your, your birthday and my father's birthday are a day apart. He's oh, the 26th. Oh, okay. okay. And right about that time was when I started noticing all of a sudden everything, it, you know, I was here. I never had the tolerance for it anyway. No. And folks know I would slap myself when I'm being stupid. I would talk to myself in the mirror, and if, if I've done something really, really stupid, I've hit myself. And if I don't take it from me, I'm not going to take it from anybody else. And nope. darling, bullshit and me. Don't have to. At this particular stage of the game, have become so allergic to one another. Mm. It's crazy. And I, ne- I mean, it's a whole new, new, ooh. Don't have time. Don't have time. Don't, exactly. I, baby, okay, either you're going to do it or you ain't. I ain't got time to sit up here and decipher no more, you know, <laughs> sit up here and, and to play the, the waiting out. game. No, you know, oh, he said he was going to. He got so much promise. Look, baby, look, okay, keep it moving, sugar, because I got things to do. Then if, if it's nothing but to sit up in my house, football naked, and scratch while I'm watching television, <laughs> I got something to damn do. You know, I ain't got time for you and your mess. You know what I'm saying? And I love that freedom about it. Oh, I love it. And I and I want and I and as an actor, I'm taking all of that with me. 
because I aspire to have the kind of career that you have. And, of course, I got my naysayers that, oh, would you getting old? And, you know, the, the, the industry is always looking for, you know, the usefulness. And, you know, you are big because, you, you know, you got all this weight on you and everything, and you need to yeah, do this. Well, so what the hell? Exactly. Yeah. Honey, listen, it, it, what is for me is for me. It happens. Mm-hmm. It happens. So is, with what that. Is, what does Shakespeare say? Gather ye rosebuds where ye may. O oh, time is fast a fleeting, and that same rose that blooms today, tomorrow, will be dying. <laughs> so, oh, oh, did you do Othello? Oh, did you do Othello? Yes, I've done it many times. God, I know it. I know it. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you do that, and I'm, I'm picturing you. Good God Almighty, God, I'm, oh my God, I would love to see you do that. I was fabulous. I know it. I know it. I I dare I know damn well you were. All three times. All three times I was fabulous. (laughs) (laughs) Ass baby. Yes. I I love it. Oh Okay, well thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah, because I got to go make donuts now, so, you know, okay, I'm a little late, care. but that's all right there. Get over it. Okay. Thank you, and I will definitely be keeping in touch with you. You can always come back. I, I will uh, let your people know how to get how to get there so that you can download it yourself and this, that, and the other. So uh, thank you so much no for problem. just wisdom, baby, for wisdom. Oh, no thank problem. you. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. talk with you soon. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. James Avery, honey. Oh, did you have a good time with it? I hope that you did. Uh, join me next week on uh, Wednesday, the 10th. Uh, it's going to be a fun show. I think I'm going to piggyback off of what I started today as far as dealing with the educational system. Uh, I may have a guest. I may not, honey. We don't know at this particular point because we just don't know. <laughs> okay? And that's just being real. At this point, let me get up out of here because I got to go make a couple of donuts to keep my roof over my head, and uh, we'll move on from there. So thank you for this special edition of Dishing Tea. Tell your friends if you loved it. Tell your enemies if you hated it. But one thing is for sure, this will move forward and go on. Until then, darling, I go by the name Big Meat. So thank you for Dishing Tea with Big Meat. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.